Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of the Trading Business School podcast, the only podcast you're ever going to need to listen to to scale and grow your trades based, service based business. And uh, today we have a cracking topic, one that is very interesting for many people. It's probably going to trigger you because uh, when I talk about this, it uh, it tends to tends to put the shackles up on people's backs. So uh, it is the topic of the ego. I'm joined uh, once again by the big bad Brian Santos. <music> Brian, thanks for joining me again today, mate. I hope you are well. Yes, doing well. Thank you, mate. Good to be here again. Great, great. So uh, like I said, big topic today, uh, the ego, and in particular, what I want to ask people is, is your ego running the show? And this is something that is, it's a topic that people don't really want to go there with. And uh, for me, it was really confronting, and it has been confronting many times. The ego, for me, I'm a six foot four Viking giant, right? So I get, you know, I get to be right more often than I probably should be purely because of my size and stature. But I remember years ago, a, a family friend of mine happened to be a lawyer. He still is a lawyer. Great man. I remember going to him in my early days of business and wanting to fight, create this, this lawsuit over at the point in time. It was, it was all about principles, you know? I want to make, I want to sue this person for X, Y, Z reason. And, and he said to me, Adam, why, why do you want to sue them? And I said, it's the principle. It's all about the principle. It wasn't about compensation. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about anything else apart from me being right. And he said to me, Adam, you can be right or you can be rich. And I was like, damn, that one hit. So I want to open up the conversation, Brian. Talk, you've, you've been in and around helping people for decades now. I, I mean, I, I don't know how you do that when you're only just a smidge over 21 years old, but uh, you obviously started early. Yeah. <laughs> but may, maybe you can give some examples of some of the stuff that you've seen over the years. And mate, to this day, I'm, I'm still dealing with people with massive egos. And the, the interesting thing is some of these people have done a lot of work, inner work on their ego, yet they still allow it to make decisions for them and to make decisions from a place of ego. Now, I'm not going to get into the definition of the ego because that's it's a whole nother podcast itself. But, you know, that, that sense of self with us ourselves and that, that need to fight, that need to be right, can be so destructive in business. I mean, tell me, Brian, what have you seen? Give me some of your war stories over the years. See, the way I see ego is if it's used wisely, it can actually be a good thing. I think what the, the term that you used was, or the question you asked is, you know, is your ego running your life or running your business? Running, running the show. Is your ego running the show? Yeah. When your ego is running the show, meaning that it's, you're not in control. That's when it's mm. a, right? But when you can control your ego and in inverted commas, use it for good, right? Yeah. Then it can be a powerful thing. And most of you who are- is, in it, is it the ego when it's being used for good? That's the question, right? Okay. What do you mean by ego? <laughs> well, well, then we get into the definitions of the ego. Now, let's, let's just say there's healthy ego and there's unhealthy ego. And let's say the ego lives on a spectrum. Yeah. Much like we all are these days. Everybody's on the spectrum of some sort. Yeah. yeah. But, but no, I agree. I agree. There, there, is, there is, I guess, the voice of the ego. Like I refer to it as a voice sometimes, right? It's, it can be, really, can be really encouraging and really productive for pushing you. And, and one of the examples you said offline was, you know, just getting to people to a certain level. Like I remember when I built my first business and took it to a million dollars and beyond really fast, a lot of that was ego driven. You know, it was driven from a place of, I want to be good. I want to be the best. I want to prove to people, right? 
I think where it started to come unstuck for me is when it gets, we move to the toxic end of the spectrum with the ego and it all becomes about being right all the time and to the point where you start making decisions absent or absent of logic and you know other things and i think that's where you're going so i'll shut up for a sec yeah no 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 you 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 you're absolutely right we i mean i guess the first thing is to be aware right is to be aware of you know you talk about a spectrum yeah of the egoness if that's the right word <laughs> Because it, even if you have an ego, I mean, we all have an ego, you know, and it changes at different points or, you know, in different situations, right? Or when you're faced with a fight, oh man, I'm good. It's, it's about principle, right? And then the ego yeah. really like, I guess, out of your control, it becomes, it runs your life instead of it running, you know, you running it. So, but what I was going to say was that just know that everyone has an ego on whichever oh. it is, right? I'm thinking about it from a business owner's point of view, someone who has a, like customers and team members. We can use that to our advantage, knowing mm-hmm. if we understand what, what motivates someone or if someone has a, you know, their ego is on, you know, wherever it is on the spectrum, we could potentially use that to our advantage and know, okay, what, will, what would make this person work well or better or, you know, mm-hmm. achieve targets? What about this customer? How can we get them across the line based on what we know about their ego or where they are on the spectrum of ego? Mm-hmm. Actually use this not just to shift our own ego or manage, uh, yeah, manage uh, ourselves, but to manage ourselves. Up. Correct. Again, like it's whenever I see some some negative situations, I also see the opportunity in it because we can yeah. go second everything. If I have an ego, other people will. And yeah. if other if I understand what their ego is or how they work, how they think, how they get motivated, what triggers them, what motivates it's a negative motivator, all those sorts of things, then we can use that to our advantage to build a business around it. And if you look at the successful business people over the years or over the- This is, this is why I tell you you're good looking all the time, Brian. Mate, working, working on your ego. Mate, this is why I come to these podcasts. It's only for that, <laughs> that very thing. Actually, I've got a, a a guy who, whenever I speak to him, he always says, "Get a young Brian." And I just love it. Like he calls me young. <laughs> I, I I only work with him because he calls me young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he knows him too. So, yeah. So I just think I think there is opportunity. Yeah, and it sounds bad, but it really this opportunity, understanding ego, mm. obviously understanding yourself and being and and managing that. So that you can you be a, a better business person. Oh, now I remember saying. So successful business people. I mean, the first person that I think of off the top of my head is someone like a, a Bill Gates, right? Early on, his ego, from you know what he's admitted to and what other people have explained, when he was younger, his ego was like through the roof, mm. and he would you know be completely rude to people and he you know he'd screw people over because he just wanted success 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 his work ethic was amazing he was obviously super intelligent and then over the years he's mellowed and his ego is probably a different type of ego you know on that scale of or the spectrum right and Mm. so he's he's obviously doing a lot more charity work and and those sorts of things as well but he's still in the top five richest men or people in the world mm. so um and he's certainly not that aggressive egotistical young guy he's still he still has an ego but he's you know i guess using it for for good yeah i think i think he he doesn't need the external validation that that he once did and he certainly doesn't need to use it as a driver you know it's it's more about his own internal his own intrinsic things whereas you know, like I sort of alluded to at the start of the the show was, you know, for me, building my first business was predominantly ego driven. I mean, there was a, there was a ton of other reasons, but I think you know, one thing that's become important for me as I've evolved is being able to identify when the ego is in play and when it is talking. You know, like the amount of people I've seen, <clears throat> and to still to this day, you know want to argue over principles like i get it don't get me wrong but the thing is it's not like often these these decisions to sue people and 
to go after people for, you know, insignificant amounts of money, you know, the, the impact that that has because you want to be right. Yes. Um, it, you know, it just, just detracts from a commercial decision. Right. And, and I see this so many times limit people, right. This is the, the big issue that I see and why I wanted to talk about it is people get so hung up on being right, right. The principle and, you know, somebody owes you money, what's, whatever it might be. And, and this is the thing I've seen people spend tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars chasing a fraction of that. And sure, they might win and they might get their costs paid for and the sum of money that they're owed. But what I see is the energy that goes into that, how they, you know, they don't focus on other things within businesses, you know, and they lose opportunities based on the fact that they're, they're fighting so much, you know, and, and that's the thing that I really wanted to bring attention to today is, is just asking that question, you know, how, where are your decisions coming from? Are they coming from a logical, commercial, like smart place or are they coming from ego and, you know, wanting to be right all the time? Because here's the thing, I mean, you said it offline, the ego can be really powerful for motivating you to get to a point. Mm. But at some point in time, it's almost you've got to become the inverse of that, you know, almost directly opposite to it. Because, you know, if you're egotistical and you want to be right all the time, then you'll get to a point where people will be like, man, I'm just trying to help you. Yeah. And, and you want to be right. Like, cool, be right. But I don't like for, for what reason, you know? And there's, there's a time and a place, don't get me wrong, but sometimes sometimes we just take that way too far and we lose sight of when it's useful and when it you know, slips into that toxic end of the, of the spectrum there. So, Yeah, very, very good point. Very important point, I think, for some of, the, some of, the, some of you who are listening at the moment, right? So, uh, you know, it's probably a good time to check in in terms of I guess, how, where your ego is at, are there things that you're doing in your business or in your life even where you should probably check in with yourself and, and, and be, be logical about things as opposed to always being about the, the principle of it or, I mean, it might be really important, but, you know, be logical or be at least uh, be objective is probably the right word. Um, yeah, I, I like that. And, and I like the fact that you talk about how it applies in our personal lives too, right? Because I think that that it probably impacts us there even more because in business, we can understand that in most ta- most places, there's a sense of logic that comes in, a sense of commercial decision-making, like what is the right thing by the business, right? Now, it might be right for you from a moral and an integrity point to argue and be right. Yeah. However, if it's going to cost the business hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, whatever it may be, geez, if it's going to cost 500 bucks and there's like zero return on investment for that. And the, and, and everybody always looks at the numbers, but there's the, you know, there's the time that goes into it. There's the emotions that goes into it and you don't ever get compensated for those things, you know? So, you know, from a business we understand, but personally like arguing with your significant other, arguing with your kids yes i like the and and my kids will argue with me out of principle all the time like and i used to want to argue back with them but now it's like for what reason like does be it how like and this is the thing i I mean we go can go off to another podcast talking about boundaries and stuff but how important is it to you for you to be right all the time yeah like and why and why yeah and, but, you know, I think this is so important because as parents, right, we know we've, we've been through life a lot longer than they have. So mm. we, we, you know, naturally know more than, than them. So in most cases, we're going to be right, you know, um, <laughs> right? But again, it's well, this, not- is, this is really interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you there, right? <laughs> how, how often were your parents right about, what they've told you to do in your life. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. All right. That's a difference. 
I think this is more than just a podcast conversation. It's like therapy session, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, we're getting we're getting deep into uh, into childhood traumas and uh, inner child work now. So, yeah, I, I I guess what I'm trying to say is, as parents, is that you know it's not always about even if you truly believe 100 percent factually you are right and they are wrong, and you know you continue to argue with them for the sake of your relationship. With them for the sake of their mental well being, your mental well being, mm. is it worth it? Is it, you know, and yeah, yeah. And then when you're, yeah. yeah, and then, and then apply that to every decision that you make in life and business. Yeah. And, and look, there's, there's got to be some deal breakers, right? There's got to be some things that you will stand for through rain, hail, or shine, but. You know, I really want to challenge people to question how important things are, you know, particularly in and around money, because people are like, you know, a thousand dollars to some people is a lot of money. hundred bucks to some people is a lot of money. Shit, a dollar is. But understanding the value of your time, understanding the value of your energy and effort and that sort of thing, you know, you've got to, you've got to be able to bring all of those into the equation when you are making a decision around am I driving this with my ego or am I driving this with logic? Because I see so many people leave and, I, and I've done it. I've done it and I still do it to this day. You know, I slip into that place where I want to be right. I want to fight. You know, I want to fight for what's right, Brian. And that's, yeah. that's how I sort of wrap it up, you know, like, and, and I, I lull myself into this false sense of security under, I want to fight for what's right and what I believe in. But at the end of the day, it detracts from me being able to take that battle up somewhere that's far more potent and far more important. Like I'd rather fight for what's right on a global scale than fight for what's right, you know, with my 13 year old son who's had a shit day at school, you know? So yeah, I, I think there's so, so many things to take away from today. I mean, give me, give me uh, a couple of your takeaways, Brian. What do you think is the, the, well, not even takeaways, mate. What are your What are your three tips for identifying the ego and making sure that you're not allowing it to rule your life and make your decisions? Well, I think is I'm putting you on the spot now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think first and foremost is is to be aware or, or put time into being aware. Right, mm. it takes effort to to think. Right, it takes effort to self analyze, and for a lot of us. We either don't want to put in the time or the effort or we're too, too fearful of, right, doing that. So I think, I think number one is put time and effort into actually assessing or like not assessing, you know, checking in on yourself, right? Being a, check, the check-in is really important, I think. Go on. I think so. And number two, I think what you said was just assessing, right? Is this actually really worth it or should I spend it, my, my return on energy mm. is spent on a different issue or on a different principle, mm. what case might be. And, and that's, yeah, that's important too. Like I, I like you, you sort of talked about energy, like return on investment, everybody automatically, uh, attaches that to money, but you, you never just invest cash. It's yeah. always time, energy and cash, you know, three of the biggest currencies out there and attention, attention is probably the biggest currency. So. Exactly. Go on, mate. I'll let you finish off with number three. Number three is understand that other people have egos too. So if we've done a self, yeah. you know, checked in with ourselves, hey, how about how can we teach others or encourage others to check in on themselves? How can we teach others, you know, to utilize their egos and be better people, you know, themselves, but also be better at their job or you know, in our business, or you know, maybe they could be you know, have a better family life or whatever it is because they're, you know, arguing a lot with their spouse or their, or their kids, you know, maybe there's something you can share with them as well in regards to this. So they're my, they're my three takeaways. Love it. Love it. Mate, uh, I am hard out of time now. I appreciate you being here and part of the show today. I've still got my rusky voice. So uh, I hope people, uh, you know, tuning in to listen to the dulcet tones and, and watching for our good looks, of course. But uh, if anybody's, you know, wants some help identifying uh, their ego and whether they think maybe at play and something they will, they want to get in control of because they can see that it potentially could be affecting 
their business or even their life, by all means, flick us an email at hello at tradiebusinessschool.com. Don't forget, if you like today's episode, please uh, like, subscribe, share, and you know, share it to somebody who's got an ego. Maybe it's a subtle way of giving them the wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hey, you need to do a bit of a check-in with yourself. So maybe we'll have to create, is your ego in control day? You know, rather than an are you okay day, like is your ego running the show day? Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's something in the future. But uh, mate, thanks again for being part of the show. It's always wonderful having you on here, mate. Uh, I'll uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being here. Cheers, Evan. Yes. See you, everyone. Bye.